What is up, you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you were new to the channel, I am Gold Pony, and today we are in the all new 2020 Ford Explorer, courtesy of Bob Ruth Ford in Dillsburg, PA. This one has been completely redesigned for 2020 on the outside, on the inside, and the tech, and essentially just about everything on this one. So, what do you guys say? Well, let's just jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so, when it comes to pricing, you guys can probably imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2020 Explorer. First one being the one we are in today, being the XLT, starting at $36,675. Then you have the Limited for $48,130. ST four-wheel drive starting at $54,740. And the Platinum four-wheel drive starting at $58,250. You guys probably noticed I didn't say four-wheel drive for those first two trim levels because they actually come standard with a rear-wheel drive configuration. And that is actually one of the major changes for the 2020 Explorer. In the last generation, they come standard as front wheel drive. Now in the 2020 model year, it will be a standard rear wheel drive setup. But if you did want to go with the four wheel drive, it's an intelligent four wheel drive system. Simply add $1,990 to one of those first two trim levels there. But when it comes to the engine setup, there are actually four different power plants now available for the 2020 Explorer. First one being the standard setup for the XLT and limited trim levels being a 2.3 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder, putting out 300 horsepower, 310 pound feet of torque sent to rear wheels or all wheels through the four wheel drive system. Power sent to the ground actually through a 10 speed automatic with paddle shifters, which we definitely will be testing out a little later in the video. But when it comes to MPG numbers for that setup, 21 city 28 highway for the rear wheel drive 20 in the city 27 highway if you want with the intelligent four-wheel drive system but so then the next power plant is actually going to be an optional engine setup available for only the limited trim level and this is going to be the hybrid configuration for the first time ever the Explorer is now getting a hybrid available so that's kind of interesting but that one is going to be a 3.3 liter hybrid v6 putting out 318 horsepower 322 pound-feet of torque again rear wheels or all wheels through a 10 speed automatic giving you mpg numbers at 16 in the city 23 on the highway next power plant is going to be exclusive to the st trim level that one's going to be a three liter twin turbo v6 putting out 400 horsepower 415 pound feet of torque sent to all wheels through a 10 speed automatic once again top speed 143 miles per hour zero to 60 in 5.5 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 18 in the city 24 on the highway but 0 to 60 and 5.5 in an SUV, a three row SUV at that is pretty darn impressive. But then the last engine setup belonging to the Platinum trim level being a three liter turbocharged V6, 365 horsepower, 380 pound feet of torque again sent to all wheels through a 10 speed automatic with MPG numbers 18 in the city, 24 on the highway. But so now, before we do any kind of accelerations in this new Explorer, I did want to mention there are several different drive modes probably the most drive modes I've ever experienced in a new car. Seven to be exact. Those seven drive modes include normal, eco, sport, tow and haul mode, slippery, deep sand and snow mode, and trail mode. And so you may be asking why in the world do I need seven different drive modes? Well, really that is gonna be to your benefit because it really does give you a drive mode for every single situation you could possibly imagine with all those. But essentially those drive modes are gonna adjust things like the throttle response, the shift points, steering sensitivity, traction control, and the anti-lock brake characteristics as well. So quite a few different things, but to actually adjust those driving modes there is a circular knob just behind the circular shifter I'll get more into that a little bit later but if you turn that to the left or the right first thing I notice is there is a nice little digital display that shows up depending on your driving mode like I just put it in sport it is a bright red display and it did just downshift for me holy cow giving you more power on demand that's always a fun thing right but having said that since the gauge is switched up since I just downshifted because of that sport driving mode let's go ahead and test out the paddle shifters actually first i want to see how quickly these things react for us here and that m button in the center of the circular dial there just simply press that in then it's going to give you that manual shift mode and let's see how quickly these things react for us here yeah there is a slight delay to the paddle shifters, but no worries, we're in an SUV anyways. How many people are really gonna be using the paddle shifters for acceleration? 
really what the paddle shifters are there for in an SUV at least is to do some engine braking in snowy weather so you don't have to hit the brakes maybe when you're going downhill and it's snowing out so they're gonna be there for you essentially for that reason but let's go ahead and take it out of that manual shifting mode to do that just simply press the M button once again there in the middle and we have now given the Explorer back full control once again so now you guys know what time it is let's do that acceleration with the car knowing what's best for us here and let's see how quickly we can get the 2020 Explorer here up to speed <laughs> dang that kicked in yeah <laughs> actually for this being a base engine setup in this XLT this thing pulls hard man I don't know if it's in sport mode or what but definitely no issues with merging onto the highway I'm surprisingly impressed with this base engine setup and again you have other power plants that can get you more power but i'm actually pretty impressed with the xlt engine here but so anyways now that we experienced that you guys know braking is equally important let's hit the brakes yeah buddy these things are amazing <laughs> four wheel disc brakes definitely no issues with bringing this larger suv to a stop once again i am impressed do want to mention though if you do want a slightly bigger brake setup if you want with the st trim level at least there are some options when it comes to braking including larger ventilated front discs red brake calipers and larger brake pads as well and the st of course being the more performance oriented version of the explorer so that's nice that that option is there for you but even if you didn't go that route again the xl T trim I'm in today definitely brings you to quite a quick stop. What's it then touching on suspension and handling a bit? Of course, you guys probably already know the 2020 Explorer rides on a brand new platform being Ford CD6 platform, all new drivetrain configuration as well for better front to rear weight distribution. And of course, with that better weight distribution, you're also going to get better handling characteristics as well. And I gotta say, I've had no issues with like the steering feel or anything like that. Explorer definitely gives you a good feeling of being in control of this larger SUV around the corner. So that's definitely nice also comparing this 2020 Explorer to the previous generation this thing actually comes in at a reduced weight around 200 pounds less than the previous generation as well and that is actually also going to contribute to better handling characteristics too but now since I got some railroad tracks here when it comes to ride quality yeah, it's as expected. Definitely not too bad there. Also wanted to mention when it comes to cabin noise, there isn't a whole heck of a lot of wind noises or any exterior noises coming into the cabin. So that's definitely a good thing as well. But now let's touch on visibility a little bit. This is a larger SUV. Sometimes you do have a little bit of issues there, but I gotta say in the Explorer, I don't see any. Of course, you're always gonna have a little bit of blind spots in the back two corners there, but really for a three row SUV, there are worse options out there. So no issues for me, at least when it comes to visibility. Although one thing I would have liked to see Ford option, at least on the 2020 Explorer is possibly a head up display that could be available maybe for the platinum trim level or something like that. But that definitely assists with visibility as well, helping you keep your eyes better on the road. But from what I can find, that is not an option on this one, unfortunately, but that pretty much closes out the performance at least. But again, this thing has been completely redesigned from the inside out. So let's go ahead and take a look at the interior but first let's take a look at the exterior of this brand new 2020 Ford Explorer. And so now starting up for our first thing, wanted to mention that front grille will differ slightly depending upon the trim level. For instance, if you want with the ST trim level, you're going to get a black mesh style front grille. XLT is going to give you black horizontal bars and the limited and platinum trim levels are going to give you more of a chrome type of design up there. But to the sides, LED headlights are actually going to come standard on the 2020 Explorer. It's definitely nice. Along with LED daytime running lights, LED signal signature lighting and LED fog lights for every single trim level but the XLT trim level actually. Also wanted to mention the lower part of that front bumper is also going to differ ever so slightly depending on the trim level. But to then make your way to the side, one of the things that has not changed among the Ford Explorers for quite some time now is that black painted front panel there that is going to remain there for the 2020 Explorer, along with black window surrounds as well. Again, that's going to come standard on all trim levels. Also looking down a little bit, you'll find Explorer lettering located on the side skirts. I found that a nice little touch there. And then surrounding that, there is going to be a black plastic finish. And this is one of the things I think Ford may be able to improve upon as well, maybe offering a body colored finish to the side skirts front and rear bumpers when it comes to that maybe on the top trim level perhaps so wouldn't have mind seeing that but then taking a look at the side mirrors it will be power adjustable heated side mirrors for all trim levels also another interesting little fact here is there side mirrors actually for every single trim level will come with a black finish whether it be a more of a matte black or a painted gloss black it will all come standard with that black finish zooming out then a little bit you will find rear privacy glass for all trim levels as well as roof rails again for all trim levels then taking a look down at the wheel setup 18 inch aluminum alloy 
alloy wheels will come standard with the XLT. And I put it that way because we do have some optional wheels today and there are optional wheel setups available. There's plenty of those, but 20 inch aluminum alloy wheels will come standard with the limited ST and platinum trim levels. And we actually do have a 20 inch wheel size today if you were curious, but now let's make our way to the back. Rear spoiler with an integrated brake light will come standard along with rear window wiper. And you will also find Explorer lettering once again back there. Again, I like that. LED tail lights will also come standard for every single trim level. Well done for it for that. Then just below it all, dual exhaust outlets. For some trim levels, you will find quad tips. Not for the XLT though, so we do just have dual exhaust outlets pointed to the ground there. So you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. But so now, since we are around back, when it comes to opening that rear hatch, you will actually have a hands-free foot activated lift gate if you want with the limited ST or platinum trim levels. Otherwise, you do have a nifty little button on the key fob if you wanted to open that rear hatch for the XLT. But either way, once opened up in that cargo area, you're gonna find things like grocery hooks, a 12 volt power outlet back there, and there's gonna be some in-floor storage as well. One of the cool things about that in-floor storage is you can take that tray out and then set it down below if you wanted to kind of hold groceries in and prevent things from sliding around. But then on the flip side of that little panel that provides the in-floor storage, there is a more rougher of a surface. So if you had some dirty items, simply just flip it over so that you don't end up getting the carpeted side of that in-floor storage kind of messed up. So I think that's pretty cool that Ford did that too. So anyways, when it comes to cargo capacity behind that third row, you will find 18.2 cubic feet of cargo space. Did want to mention there is a power folding third row actually for all trims, but the XLT as far as the standard setup goes at least. Then once that third row is folded down though behind the second row, cargo space comes in at 47.9 cubic feet. And with all rows folded, cargo space comes in at 87.8 cubic feet. So for comparison's sake, the Hyundai Palisade I recently reviewed comes in at 86.4. Honda Pilot comes in at 83.9. So what I'm getting at here is the Ford Explorer does have quite a bit of cargo space back there. But so now let's make our way to the seating. I did want to get to the seating configurations for the new Explorer here. Max seating capacity is actually seven at the very most because that third row is actually always going to come with two seats back there. There is not a third seat option back there like some of the other competitors in its class, but most configurations actually for the Explorer are going to come with six. So obviously driver, passenger seat, captain's chairs in the middle, and then the two seats in the back. And you can option for that center bench row seat. I think it's like 500 ish dollars there if you had an extra person and you did end up needing that seat. So that's going to be an available option. But when it comes to rear leg room, that third row is going to give you 32.2 inches. So so for reference, I mean, even six feet tall, this is how much space I have back there. But we'll say one of the things I liked about getting to that third row is there is actually just simply one button that you have to press in the second row there. And it's kind of like a, a spring mechanism, I guess. It just sends that second row forward. You could easily get back to the third row. Another option is simply climb in the second row with the captain's chair set up at least. You could just go ahead and make your way just down the middle there to the back seat. So that's another option as well. But Speaking of the second row seats there, when it comes to the rear leg room there, that comes in at 39 inches even. And when it comes to rear ventilation, that can be found on the roof of the Explorer as in previous models. So all three rows stay comfortable there. Tri-zone climate control is gonna come standard for all trim levels as well. There are rear sun shades for that second row. That is gonna be optional. Also second row heated seats are gonna be found on the limited trim level and up. That's definitely nice as well. And for those second row passengers, there are plenty of charging ports, including a USB charger, 12 power outlet and if you go with the captain's chair setup like we have today and in between those captain's chairs there there's also going to be a couple cup holders as well as a little tray storage area there as well but so now let's make our way to the front seat standard setup is actually a cloth finish on the xlt and since i do have the xlt you're probably wondering why i have the leather that is an option once again you can really deck out an xlt if you wanted to let me tell you however a full leather finish is going to come standard with the limited and platinum trim levels and actually can Get massaging seats on the newer Explorer as well. That's going to be a $995 option if you wanted.
that after a long day's work. That's kind of cool. And of course you can get heated and ventilated seats up here in the front as well. But taking a look at the steering wheel, I actually really like the steering wheel primarily because of the grips. They are a little on the thicker side of things, but not too thick like in a sports car or something like that. But they are a little thicker. A lot of times in three row SUVs, they're gonna be kind of wimpy. And it doesn't really inspire confidence going around corners and things like that. Although you shouldn't be going around corners fast in an SUV anyways, but I do like that the grips are a little bit thicker there. Also, the steering wheel is tilt and telescoping. It is power adjustable if you go with the limited trim level and up, and again, heated as well if you go with the limited trim level and up there too. All right, so but now when it comes to the startup, let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Ford logo on the one side, and when you flip it over, lock, unlock that button to pop the rear hatch, and that times two button with the circle around it in the middle, that is actually a remote start button, which comes standard on every single trim level of the Ford Explorer. I love that Ford did that. So that is gonna help you start the Explorer up, warm it up on super cold days before you actually get inside so no one's uncomfortable. That's definitely a feature you get used to quite quickly. Also push button start is gonna come standard on every single trim level. So that is definitely nice as well. So what do you say? Let's go ahead and press that. I'm gonna put my foot on the brake. Push button start is located just underneath of the air vents. Kind of an interesting placement. Haven't really seen it there before, but all you need to do is simply put your foot on the brake and press that engine start button there. And so by now when it comes to the gauge setup, it is gonna differ slightly again, depending on the trim level. The gauge setup that you're looking at right now will come standard on every trim level but the Platinum. I'll get into that one in a second. But for this one, you have the tachometer on the left, speedometers on your right. You have a fairly large digital display front and center, which can be controlled by using the steering wheel mounted controls on the right side there. But that, of course, is going to give you a ton of different information, like how many miles you have left until you hit empty. There's a digital speedometer up there. When you need your next oil change, trip information, there's a ton of different things you could search through on this particular display. But with the Platinum, this is where it gets good. 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster. So it is a full digital gauge cluster like you would find in a BMW or an Audi or something like that. So I love that the Ford Explorer has that now. And that is gonna be specific to the platinum trim level in case you were interested there. So that is definitely a good thing. But let's take a look at overall interior quality. There is a twin panel moonroof that will come standard on the platinum as well as illuminated front scuff plates again with the platinum trim level only. Overhead sunglass holder. This is going to come standard on all trim levels, but the thing that impressed me about this one, this thing opens fast. Probably the fastest overhead sunglass holder I've ever experienced in a car. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it is a thing. Universal garage door opener is going to come standard with the limited trim level and up. Also, wireless phone charger is going to be optional on this one. Ambient lighting is going to come with all trim levels but the XLT that we have today. And overall, I have to say that the 2020 Ford Explorer is well thought out when it comes to interior because let me explain here. In front of that circuit, circular shifter there, there is a storage system. It is pretty deep as well, but that's also gonna have a 12 volt power outlet, USB charging port, and another little phone charging port up there as well. But just behind that, there are two cup holders as well as a place to put your cell phone. And my Google Pixel 2 fits just fine right in front of those cup holders there. So kind of holds it in place. Perhaps when you have the car hooked up to your cell phone via USB connection for Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, things like that. We'll get more into that in a second. But just behind all of that, there is yet another place for you to sit your cell phone with a rubberized bottom once again so it doesn't slide around if you're going off-roading or wherever. But I do like that the cell phone holders in the Explorer come with a rubberized bottom again so they don't slide around. So that's well thought out. Just behind that, there is a very large storage area, again, with a little tray inside of that storage area, once again, with a rubberized bottom. And there's a 12-volt power outlet found in that storage area as well. And overall, there are plenty of storage areas found in the Explorer. The glove box is quite a nice size as well. And believe it or not, once again, just underneath the tech display, is a rubberized storage area for your cell phone. Three areas you could store your cell phone. So if you happen to collect cell phones, look no further than the Ford Explorer here. And perhaps my only constructive criticism on the interior here is there are some shiny buttons just to the right and left of the tune and volume buttons here that do give you a slight glare if the sun hits it at the right angle. But really that is the only thing as far as constructive criticism goes, at least that I can think of. But since I've mentioned it, let's go ahead and make our way to the tech display. There is an eight 
16-inch color touchscreen display that we have today that comes standard. There is a 10.1-inch portrait color touchscreen display that goes for $995. That's going to be available on the ST and Platinum trim level. So that doesn't come standard on any trims, but it is available on those too. But either way, actually, even with this 8-inch color touchscreen display, you will get Bluetooth and audio streaming. Again, like I was mentioning, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. That essentially gives you free navigation through your smartphone, as well as the ability to like and dislike your Pandora songs up there as well. That's what I use on my own 2019 Ford. I use that every day. I love it. Factory navigation system is going to come standard on the limited trim level and up. You can, of course, check out your radio settings up on that tech display as well. And by the way, when it comes to the sound system on this one, six speakers are going to come with the XLT. And if you went with any of the other trim levels with the exception of the XLT, you will get a 12-speaker Bang & Olufsen sound system on this one. And perhaps the last thing I wanted to mention on the tech display at least is when you do put the Explorer in reverse, you will find a rear view camera letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead me into safety. And so to start, there are front side and side curtain airbags, also a front passenger knee airbag as well. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Also, tire pressure monitoring system will come standard, but perhaps the best part about the 2020 Explorer is something called Ford Copilot 360. This is going to come standard on the limited trim level and up. It is available on the XLT. We actually do have it. It is one of the options that we do have on this XLT today, but with this, you are going to get adaptive cruise control with stop and go. There's a lane centering system, speed sign recognition, evasive of steering assist, blind spot information system, autonomous emergency braking, and also automatic high beams. And so, but that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like the video and subscribe. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there, and I will see you guys in the next video. Stay gold. Good turning radius. Well done, Explorer. My goodness. Yeah. <laughs>